start the webinar. Um, my name is Zara Dabahik and I uh, will be starting shortly along with Emmanuel to present uh, the webinar titled IoT Platform Architecture and Market Players. Okay, um, I'd like to welcome all of you to the webinar um, and thank um, basically the Internet of Things Egypt Forum for um, uh, organizing uh, this webinar. Uh, the webinar is going to focus on talking about the IoT platform architecture, the existing IoT platform arc uh, platforms that are out there and what they do, and then basically talk about fundamentally what should be the components in an IoT platform architecture and discuss IoT market players in general, not all of them, but um, uh, uh, basically uh, a selected bunch that uh, we would like to share what they do with you. Uh, the presentation today will be uh, uh, presented by Emmanuel Petit and myself, Reda Bahig, who uh, are both working at Mentor Graphics. So I want to start with talking about the IoT platform and I basically want to hypothetically uh, make a press release uh, of a first smart bridge. Um, basically, uh, let's hypothetically assume that the, there is a company called Doodle Bridge Organization and Doodle Bridge Organization would like to announce the opening of its first ever smart bridge. I won't talk much, I, I will leave the picture to basically uh, show you if anyone comes and tells you this is a release of a smart bridge, how would you uh, view that announcement? Additionally, ZTC Cooperation, also a hypothetical cooperation, announces the delivery and release of its first IoT bridge. Uh, NanoHard Cooperation, also a hypothetical cooperation, announces the delivery of its first ever smart IoT bridge. And finally, MGO introduces the first smart bridge. So I'm basically just showing you that. I know you already have conceptions about this is not a bridge, let alone a smart bridge. Um, so you were able to make that decision because you know what a bridge should do. And that's exactly what we want to do in this presentation, to tell you what an IoT platform, an end-to-end -end IoT platform should do. So just in a nutshell to recap, our objectives is to make you aware of the IoT end-to-end -end platform components. Uh, we'll start that by talking about the existing definitions of IoT platforms out there and what they do, and then basically tell you everything that should go into an IoT platform so that you can answer the question yourself. If someone makes an announcement and tells you this is an IoT platform, you can answer the question if this is really an IoT platform and a complete one, or is it missing some components? Uh, based on the theoretical presentation of what the IoT components of the platform is going to be, uh, you, we're going to also show you an IoT architecture case study, the platform architecture case study, and then we'll jump into discussing what uh, the market players of the IoT uh, domain are right now, the big market players, and uh, hopefully if we have time we'll just point you out to an easy way to start implementing your first commercial IoT application based on things that are already in place and existing. So um, the, the introduction I made is basically to tell you that not every IoT platform is an IoT platform. Right now the existing IoT platforms out there uh, mainly refer to 
application enablement platform and that means that you basically are allowed to develop your application and put it in a in a platform that allows access to uh, this application via that platform but with that said there are currently four types of IOT platforms that um, are, are, are given that label the first category is connectivity or machine to machine um, and, the, and this is basically a platform allowing the ability to connect and manage devices um, in a resilient, scalable way, uh, which is fundamental to machine-to-machine -to -machine and many IoT solutions. A range of different kinds of platforms have emerged to assist in this endeavor. Of all the platform types, connectivity support platforms, such as, for example, Jasper Technologies and Ericsson are the highest profile. To date, such platforms have been primarily uh, focused on cellular networks and often enable and manage the tasks of initiating, configuring SIMs, um, and these actually platforms ensure that connectivity paths are managed and monitored and provide some additional tools such as uh, real-time connectivity status, reporting, troubleshooting, and often uh, SIM ordering and profile creation. So this is basically the first category that uh, inhibits or uh, assumes the term IoT platform. The second uh, category is infrastructure as a service backend. So this is basically most of the platforms out there. It's a hosting space um, for processing power for applications and services. Um, provides access to computing resources in a virtualized environment. Basically, users of the infrastructure as a service will receive virtual service that they will manage. Uh, big name players in this area are um, uh, Amazon Web Services, Azure, and Google Compute Engine. So Amazon Web Services is one of the oldest cloud providers, and according to Gartner Magic Quadrant, has the most of the market share. Uh, for new customers, they offer a free tier that enables them to use it freely for one year with some limited resources. And for a typically new application or website with few users, the resources should be more than enough with this free trial. Azure, on the other hand, is a Microsoft Cloud solution. It's intensively promoted and has a large base of customers, notably Apple. Uh, the solution is not limited to Microsoft products and can be used on any OS like Linux. Uh, and finally, Google Compute Engine. This is the sort of new kid on the block. It's stable and lowering the price continuously, and their data center is limited at this time to a few countries but are expanding. And finally, uh, the last category, uh, sorry, the third category uh, uh, that inhibits that IoT platform name is hardware-specific platforms. Uh, so this is basically some companies that sell connected devices have built their own proprietary software backend, like for example Google Nest or Philips Hue. Uh, they like to refer to the backend as an IoT platform, but the platform is closed, so you're not actually, as a developer or anyone, allowed to actually do anything on it. Um, since the platform is not open to anyone else on the market, it's debatable whether one should call it an IoT platform or not. And as I said, a good example of that are products like, for example, Google Nest or Philips Hue. And finally, the last category of IoT platform definition is consumer enterprise software extensions. And that's basically existing enterprise software packages and operating systems, such as Microsoft Windows 10, uh, and they are increasingly allowing the integration of IoT devices. Currently, these extensions are often not advanced enough to be able to classify them as an IoT platform, but they may get there soon. Um, a confusing aspect of IoT platforms is that companies are starting to combine different services IBM, for example, is combining its IoT foundation application enable, enablement platform such as Bluemix, IAS, Backend, Jasper, and Telet. Two companies have traditionally focused in connectivity, M2M space, have now added IoT application enablement cap capabilities to their offer. So basically, uh, it, it's like we don't know what should be in an end-to-end -end platform so that we can say, yep, Connectivity is a platform, IAAS is a platform, hardware-specific platforms is a platform, and consumer enterprise software extension is a platform. So in order to answer that question, uh, we basically prepared this uh, table for you, and it's uh, 